Hey everybody, how are you? My name is Ken Carey and I am co-founder and executive creative director and director consumer strategist at Script to Screen M2. And I'm really, really happy that you're joining us today on this webinar for our Thought Leader Thursday webinar, which has been very exciting because we've had some great guests. And today we have another great guest. And our topic today is about launching or using a D2C, a direct-to-consumer campaign for a legacy brand or a household brand. And Dan Bilger is our guest. And Dan's the perfect guest for that because Dan is the Vice President of Marketing and Product Development, Development for Cleva North America. And Cleva North America has Kenmore, the iconic brand Kenmore, under its portfolio of products and brands. So, Dan and I had a nice conversation and we had worked together in a former life with Dan at another company. And now he has taken over the vice president of marketing for uh, Cleva and specifically Kenmore. And we came, we worked together about creating a direct to consumer campaign, television, digital, OTT, every, the entire, the entire uh, ecosystem of the campaign. And I think you can get a lot of value out of this. But before we start our webinar, I wanna take a poll question and how many people on this webinar are, is as part of a company, is your company a household brand name? I think that's gonna be important because I wanna make sure if you are, you're gonna get a lot of value out of this because it's a very, very specific strategy about doing that. And I see um, a lot of people answering here on our poll question and awesome. So. So it looks like there's a few people that um, work for a company that is a, a household brand, which is fantastic. I think you can get a lot of value out of this because when you're talking about a household brand in direct to consumer, there's very specific things you want to be doing. You have to have, you know, the brand integrity. You have to understand all of the places that this direct to consumer campaign is going to affect in what you're doing. Is that gonna be retail? Is it gonna be online sales? Is it gonna be Amazon? Those types of things are very, very important. And especially if you're launching a new product for a brand, there's a lot of information that needs to get out to the consumers. And first and foremost, you're always trying to build trust. Because when you have trust, there is so much more, um, so you have so much more of ability to, to, to get a transaction going on. So you have to build trust with information and education and the uh, um, uh, uh, validity and, and people validating um, what your product or service does along with experts. So there's a lot of things that you need to be doing and we're gonna be talking about that in this webinar. So anyways, thanks for answering the poll. For you, for all of, for, for anybody, part of this webinar, you're gonna get a lot of value at, but specifically, if you work for a company or are a company that is a household brand, I think you're gonna get um, a lot of great information. So anyways, let's go to our interview with Dan Bilger. All right, so I'm very excited to introduce Dan Bilger on the Thought Leader Thursday webinar series here at Script to Screen. And Dan is the Vice President of Product Development and Marketing at Cleva North America. And that may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but Dan, explain to me who Kaliva is and a little bit about your background. Sure, sure. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, Kaliva um, is a um, small to mid-sized company located in Greenfield, South Carolina. They um, own several brands, um, one of which is VacMaster, which is in the um, wet-dry vac business, and it's an up-and-coming brand that's mm -hmm. starting to gain uh, popularity. Um, but another thing that they do is we license um, brand, some brands as well. So, and we manufacture under license. And, and one of those examples is we manufacture Kenmore vacuums under license. Uh, and, and that's uh, probably a lot of what you know, we're here to talk about yep. today. Yep. Uh, my, my background um, is uh, I've been in consumer durable goods, consumer products my whole career, more than 20 years. Uh, mm -hmm. Most recently before Cleva, I spent uh, some time uh, managing shark vacuums at Shark Ninja. Um, and so, you know, I've been in and around uh, this space and this category for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been interesting to see 
um, just the evolution, not only of products, but how products are marketed in the space. So when I, I'm going to go back a little bit for our audience, because um, Dan and I first met when he was at Shark Ninja and that company was going through just e explosive growth at that time. Right. And Dan had a, an interesting, at least from my perspective, an interesting role of working with the, the, the I, I call it co-CEOs and you know your team in marketing and product development and yeah. and seeing it all come together and that's where we met and that's where i um just gleaned a lot of respect for you dan of knowing as a as a product development guy who really knew how to market which is right. such a rarity such a rarity i'm so glad to to see that you um now are with cleva and and that's how we got connected again is um, Dan reached out to us to do a direct-to-consumer campaign to relaunch an iconic brand like Kenmore. So let's get right to the, the brass tacks here, Dan. So when it's the responsibility of like bringing Kenmore back to the, the world, if you will, tell me how that decision came about and why direct-to-consumer was the direction that you guys decided to take. Sure. Um, so in terms of, I mean, Kenmore as a brand never really went away. Um, but what I would say is for a, a long time, uh, really uh, back into um, history, um, Kenmore as a vacuum cleaner brand was only available at Sears, right. at Sears outlet stores, right? And so with uh, Sears uh, cutting down significantly on their number of stores, um, it was pretty clear that if that brand was going to continue and exist, and there was a lot of good products developed and mm -hmm. very good consumer reports ratings and a lot of goodwill and, and good products developed over the years, um, that they needed to find an outlet for distribution outside of Sears. And that's where Cleva came in. Um, and as a, as a licensee of the brand, have the ability to uh, really approach the market and as you say, reintroduce the brand uh, for vacuums. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, Kenmore brand is out there in a lot of different ways across multiple retailers on other types of products, right. like large appliances and all the way through. Um, however, as, as it relates to vacuums, we wanted to introduce some new innovation. We wanted mm -hmm. to introduce uh, some new technology and relevant new products, but we also wanted to build on the goodwill of the Kenmore brand. And we wanted to um, really latch on to some of the basics and the kind of a strong foundation to build from. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of why we chose direct response, right? Um, I mean, this is something that I've been, I, I guess, living with for a while. And I've gotten to understand that if you have a lot to talk about on your product, <laughs> um, you know, if you don't have a medium to tell your story and to communicate directly to your consumer, it can become somewhat of a challenge. The ability to tell the story completely, as opposed to a few bullets on the front of a box. Or in 15 seconds or 30 seconds. Right, right. It makes all the difference. And so, you know, and the so ability to tell the story is probably number one. Mm -hmm. Number two for me is the ability to reach lots of folks in a cost effective way. Um, you know, running traditional advertising um, with a small to mid-sized company could be a pretty tough sell. And a lot yeah. of folks watching probably can very much relate to that, yep. uh, where, you know, you need to get your word out, you need to tell your story, but you don't have 10 or $20 million to spend on a traditional national advertising campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the, and then the third thing is, you know, with us, um, establishing new relationships with new retail partners outside of Sears. Um, it was important that we could uh, explain to them, to explain to our retail partners, you know, how we're going to support them and how we're going to drive folks into their stores so that we can all be successful. I think what's really interesting about that comment, Dan, is that, you know, creating um, a direct to, uh, a DRTV campaign or a direct to consumer campaign is one thing, but you have to, you have to, it's hand in hand with your retailers because they want traffic. They want people that know about your product and want to buy your product. Otherwise, you have no chance with them, right? You're just another person standing in line pitching something, right? Right. And, and I mean, you, you, you need to have the whole package, right? So number one, you need to have a product that's relevant and that's not just like everything else, yep. right? And that introduces and really breaks some new ground. Um, 
you need to have a in in many cases a brand uh, mm -hmm. that's recognizable, or you need to have the ability to create one. Right. Um, and you have the ability to you know once you have folks' attention, whether it's the buyer or whether it's uh, someone at the end uh, at the other end watching a, a direct response uh, media, mm -hmm. um, you know you, you have their attention. Now you want to have the ability to say. Why am I excited about this, and why do I think you should be excited about this? And it's it's a it's a there is there's there's no daylight in between you and your message and who you're trying to get to, which I think um, is unique. Yeah, uh, in, in the way that that's delivered. So one of the things that I wanted to get into that I hope that be, I think would be really um, a value to our audience is the fact that you have a new product, you have a, you have a, an iconic brand. But you have a whole new way of delivering a, uni a unique selling proposition to the right. consumer, especially. And I'm not going to, you know, blow your thunder here, but because I want you to de describe it, you had a you had a, a much. It's not just reintroducing Kenmore. It's not just building retail relationships, which is monumental enough. You have over a decade of hundreds of millions of dollars telling consumers, bagless is the only way to go. So. Right. Other people have mountains like this. You had one like this, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're, and we're still climbing. Yeah, but <laughs> but, um, but we're ascending. But, 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 but we're ascending, right? Um, and and I I feel like again, you know, having the right product means it's not just about the brand. It's just not about checking the boxes, but going in and really being able to tell a unique story. So in and in this case, as you mentioned, you know, we have a we have a a marketplace that's made up of roughly 90% bagless vacuums, uh, uprights, yep. and uh, about 10% of the uprights are are bagged. Um, and you know, some of the some of those bag vacuums are vacuums that people would recognize and that have been around for many many years. So for us to come into um, the space and introduce something that really changes completely the narrative, yes. Um, you know, was was very interesting. And what we realized, the more we talked to people and we did our research up front and, and started to get product in the hands of people to use, is that they really very much um, were experiencing a pain point with bagless. Right. That nobody was talking about, that it was just invisible. Um, it was a frustration. It was almost like, you know, uh, keep calm and carry on. I mean, it was everybody was dealing with it, but nobody was talking about it, and, right. and because there was no, there's no solution. Exactly. So if I don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. If if it's a, if you're making a bagless product, there's no solution to the problem, or um, you know, not, at least not one that's been invented yet. Right. And so, um, so by going back to introducing a bagged vacuum, what we were able to do was to take that pain away yep. uh, and replace it with some delight uh, in that I don't have to, I don't have to touch the messy dirt. It's easy for me to empty. My house is going to be cleaner. I don't and reintroduce these things back into the air. So that really resonated with people, continues to resonate with people. Um, and, um, you know, it's not everybody all at once, right? Yep. But what's going to happen is, you know, little by little more people are going to hear this message yep. and they're going to start to think uh, differently about uh, perhaps mm -hmm. about the way that they, uh, they look at the category. And so, and so when you look at direct to consumer, and you think about everything that you just said, yep. it becomes perfectly clear that that's not happening in 15 and 30 second increments with yep. oodles of cash burning a hole in your pocket for a traditional campaign, right? I mean, it is a, a fairly straightforward message, but it's still, it's it's important. Like that's one part of the message. Yes. But there's a whole, no, there's, a, there's a lot more than that. Like that's just one element, mm -hmm. but I got to check all the other boxes too. I got to make sure that the product is going to delight the consumers, not just in how well it empties, mm -hmm. but in every other From respect. Too. Right. Uh -huh. uh, and so, you know, whether it's maneuverability or lightweight or, you know, uh, all, all of these things, cleanability, ease of use, uh, th all those boxes need to be checked. And, um, you know, a, cons a consumer's relationship with a vacuum is one that, you know, if, if I'm not, if you're not checking the boxes, it can create an incredible amount of frustration. And if you are checking all the boxes, it can, you know, ease a lot of pain. And so people actually do a little bit of research and they figure out, 
you know, I, I want to go out and I want to find one of those five star vacuums I keep hearing about. Yeah. And and you got to make sure that you that you are. Yeah. So so what Dan is explaining is that that, you know, it's a fairly simple message, but there are so many reasons to believe that we as marketers have to um, get consumers to understand. And then you got to pay off the benefit of the benefit. And then you got to create an offer and all those types of things. So you can see how that takes time. And, 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 and that's what you've been able to do in your direct to consumer campaign. And, and, yeah. and, and, and in addition to that, Dan, it's not just television talk about it. it's, t it's a total omni channel approach. And that's a, yes. that's a different way of thinking of direct response today than quote unquote back, back in the day. Yeah, and and it's and it has evolved over the years, um, you know. And obviously, digital, um, with every passing year, becomes more and more important. You know, we've had a tremendous amount of success in this campaign, utilizing television uh, and also using digital to enhance that and to you know reach more people. And I, I what I found is it's pretty clear that one complements the other. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, hearing, and, and that this isn't new, right? Anytime you have multiple channels of advertising, you know, you're going to get that compounding effect. But especially here where you have the ability to um, reach folks in a passive way, right. uh, you know, just as they're receiving information, but then uh, also enabling them to engage in a more active way um, and providing them, uh, providing that, that two-way communication. Yeah, and, and I would say that, you know, it's, I agree that, and I think people understand the more you see it in other places, the better, but, but the difference to me, Dan, is that you're focusing on a very specific pain point and you're being very, um, direct about what you're doing. You're not trying to solve everybody's problems, but you're right. solving the, the main problems everywhere. So right. once they get into the funnel, if you will, yeah they're going to learn so much more about what a great opportunity, what a great product it is. That's right. Yeah. You, you, there's one element of the product that is the hook that'll draw me in. But then once I click on that, I'm going to, that opens me up to a whole another whole world of information uh, that I can go as deep as I want to go. And right. Find out more. Tell me a little bit about um, for our audience, for, for businesses that are thinking about, mm -hmm. you know, maybe direct to consumer, or going traditional, um, right. but they're trying to either launch a brand, prop up a brand, right. change the perception of a brand, or even scale a brand, because all four of those are, are what's happening in the direct-to-consumer business. Right. What, what would you say are the three most important things that would be really important for our audience to understand for people in a position like yourself? who's responsible right. for the campaign and or a founder or something to that right. nature? Well, I guess the first thing is that um, since it, I, I still would say that even though direct response is growing as a, as a medium and more and more people are getting familiar with it, and I think that paradigms and, and just perceptions are evolving over the years and it's becoming more mainstream, I don't think it's mainstream yet. Like, I, I don't know hmm. that it's being thought of as mainstream. And so as I'm looking at it, um, you know, part, part of what, what I would need to do or what I have done is, um, you know, internally folks need to understand what it is you're trying to do and all the things that we just got done talking about, about how, you know, it gives you the ability to tell the story and you can reach lots of folks in a cost effective mm -hmm. way and you can support your retail partners that those become the reasons, mm -hmm. right? But then, you know, take, turning the page from that is, okay, I know why I'm pursuing it, but really understanding how, do, how does direct response give me those things? Um, and, and as an organization, do I have the chops? Do I have the core competency to pull it off? Like, you know, it, this isn't maybe, you know, you might be thinking this isn't like just going to an agency and, and, and having them, you know, put together a campaign from start to finish. Well, actually, um, you know, in, in the time, Ken, that we've spent together working mm -hmm. on this and working with script to screen and, and, uh, and M2, um, it, it has been somewhat of a turnkey uh, in some respects, mm -hmm. uh, a turnkey relationship where, you know, having a partner with, 
a strong background and a proven track record and history of creating world-class content, mm -hmm. right? And, and creating those messages is, is important, right? Developing a partnership, making sure that, you know, and working with a, with, with a strong uh, production arm with, you know, with folks that, that are, that, that this is, this is what they do, mm -hmm. making sure that they can take your message and turn it into a compelling, uh, a compelling show, a compelling mm -hmm. uh, uh, digital campaign, but then also a partner that understands all of the aspects of managing a campaign. So there's the, there's the show creation, right? There's the scripting, there's the shooting, there's the production. Mm -hmm. um, but then how on earth do you take a traditional company that might have a warehouse that, you know, ships domestic availability to retail customers? They don't, they, they've never heard of any, anything like infomercial right. fulfillment or right. 3PL or, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, all the aspects of that from, you know, from media buying to offer development, to call centers, to fulfillment centers, all these things, it can be, you know, pretty overwhelming to think about mm -hmm. unless you realize that, um, you know, that there, there's, you can go, uh, you know, and work with a with an agency like Script to Screen, and 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 they can walk walk you through the entire process. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, there there's no need for core competency in each of those areas. The only thing that's needed internally with uh, is what am I trying to accomplish, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what do I have a good product? Do I have a good story? Do I know where I'm trying to go? Um, is that's real and and the desire to give it a to give it a try. That's Awesome. So if I, if I'm going to, I'm just going to go over that. And if you want to add anything to that, because I think these are really three really strong points that yeah. I don't care who the brand or the business or whatever it is, what Dan just said are three really important things. And the first one is educate the team and get buy-in, Right. you know, because I, I know, you know what it's like when you're all excited about something and not everybody's on board and it's and to pull off something like this. Everybody has to be bought in, but yep. it starts from you or the, you know, the CMO or the founder that has to educate what this looks like because it looks differently. It's a different looking animal. So, right. so educate the team and buy in from the, from the team. The other, the other thing is work with experts. I think that's what I heard. Work with experts from right. creation, execution, ongoing management, optimization, media. Work with experts who've been there, done that, right? Right. And 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 just realizing that, you know, it's not all of the things that make up a successful campaign, and there are many, um, don't have to be micromanaged by the company, right? Right. It could be met it could be there's an agency that can step in and and, and assist. Right. And then the third would be understand your kpis what are you right. trying to accomplish because for some and, and some of them some kpis that we work with are i want to drive retail sales and then i will create a financial model that allows me to do that where i can either use it as a subsidy or i can it can be a profit center but the end goal is to drive retail in your case it's to make front-end sales build the brand drive retail so it opens more opportunities for Kenmore. Is that, is that a correct assessment? Yeah, that's fair. I, I think also it's, 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 you know, once it's a way to help us get on the shelf right, at top tier retailers. And then once we are on the shelf, um, it's a way to, to help drive business into the store as well. So um, it's, right. a, it's a very important component to it. Um, and then also the, um, you know the partially self-funded nature of it the subsidy as we call it correct uh, is so so critical to being able to to reach as many people as you can and and it goes back to the fact that um you know if you're a smaller company and you have right. big aspirational goals you don't have to have those oodles and oodles of dollars of cash if you do it smart because right. you can build up to it and build up to it and build up to it which is what you're doing so you're you're yeah you are in a, in a situation where you're getting money back immediately, maybe not everything, but money back immediately, but your other KPIs are to get on shelf. And once you're on shelf and established, right, it gives more opportunity for the business. 
Right. Well, we're running a campaign that's, you know, roughly 3x the size of what it's costing us to run. So in other words, we're getting a lot more bang for the money that's being spent. You know, Can you say that again? What has direct to consumer <laughs> done for you? You know, it's it's giving giving me the ability to have a campaign that's basically 3x what it would be if it was a traditional without a direct response component to it. I'm just going to say, and the reason why Dan can make that comment is because Dan came to us with the team, the executives all bought in. So Dan is, he's, he's, he's preaching and doing what he said he's done. So the team bought, bought in. The founders, we met everybody. Everybody was bought in. You work with experts. You understand what your KPIs are. And you're you're nimble enough to understand how to adjust those KPIs as it changes, right? Because these right. campaigns adjust and change, right? Would you that's right. would you say yeah. that's pretty accurate? Totally. And and you know, having our you know, our weekly call where we can look at all the results from the week and it really is that dynamic where we're looking week to week as to what the performance are, what are the key drivers in the campaign, mm -hmm. uh, making little adjustments as we go mm -hmm. uh, and optimizing the campaign from week to week. Absolutely. And that, that, that you don't get that level of feedback uh, with a lot of traditional marketing campaigns, right? right. You know, you're, you're, you're throwing a dart and you hope you hit the, the target. Right. Um, whereas this, we, we literally know every single week exactly how we're doing. Right. Um, and, and we can adjust based on that. Right, and, and, and what exactly is the dart we're pulling out to accomplish what we want to accomplish? When you, when you talk about this direct response, direct to consumer campaign, um, one of the things that you said was get on shelf and then yep. make sales. So how does an, a direct response commercial, like what we've done in you know, short form and in mid form and long form and our digital, Yep. What is it doing that is providing the tool or the mechanism for that that consumer to walk into that store in that zero moment of impact where there's a wall of right. vacuums? What is it that this campaign is doing that's making that person choose the Kenmore yeah. intuition? It's good. Good. It's a good question. I, I I think it. I think what you're what we're doing over time is you're planting seeds. In, in people's minds, you're, you're, you're giving them things to think about. You know, I might watch five minutes of a show or 10 minutes of a 30 minute show, or maybe I'll catch it twice in a different place when, it, you know, I, you know, chances are I'm not necessarily sitting down and watching the entire 30 minute show from start to finish, mm -hmm. but in, but the way that it's structured is there's enough references to the uniqueness of the product all the way through that even if I've only seen bits and pieces, if I'm if I'm in the if I'm actually in the retailer and I'm doing the shopping and I'm looking down the line, I'm I'm making my price value compares and trying to figure out what the best product is to buy. If I can pluck out of the back of my brain the fact that you know last week I happened to see somebody that was using this product and was delighted by the fact that how easy it was to empty and how they don't have to empty it for, you know, a month or two at a time and how great it does on all the other vacuuming jobs. And that stuck with me. Um, I'm going to be much more likely to spend more time checking that one out mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, comparing to, to what else is available. You know, not everyone's going to pick up the phone and order a product right then. Correct. But, but, um, but they are, they are absorbing the information, whether it's through the television or whether it's digitally. Um, and when it comes time to make the purchase, uh, or maybe they'd be quicker to upgrade than they otherwise might have been because something's right. right? right. Um, that that um, you know they're they're coming in as a more educated, basically as a more educated, educated buyer consumer. Yeah. or educated consumer. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, I'm, they're coming in with a bit of information that someone who didn't see it might not have right right um, and and they they might be making their decision based on a completely different criteria mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and you multiply that by the time that right. you air and the people that go into the stores and you can see how it could become a profitable yes. venture let's just think about and i'd love to get your feedback uh, to this question for our audience is that if there's no denying that the consumer journey today is so different. I may wake up in the morning, watch TV. I may text, check my phone. 
I may listen to radio. I may be on my computer at the office. I'm back on Facebook. I'm the, the journey changes. Talk about how a directed consumer is perfectly positioned to be is to to follow that journey that potential customer has because people believe and I've heard this many times, Dan. They go, well, you know, I, I don't watch TV or or you know who's watching TV, but that's right. it's a an important it's an extremely important part, but it's yeah. but it's not the end all, right? Sure. Well, I mean, I, you know, we don't have to guess. I mean, I can see because we look at the results every week, right? I know that somebody's watching. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, a lot of people and, watching. Right? A lot of people are watching and, and, and also we're reaching a lot of people digitally, but I mean, that's what, again, going back to the earlier point, it goes hand in hand. I think that, you know, it, we are in an environment today that is that that it's it's different than the environment 10, 15 years ago. The nice thing about what we're doing here is we're adapting, right? So we're not just relying 100% on one vehicle to communicate. Right. Um, and, um, you know, and what direct response does that a lot of other ways of advertising does not is it, it, the, it gives you feedback that is, like I said before, was so accurate mm -hmm. that you can act on it and make those changes week to week. So, you know, you can make sure that you're getting in front of the most people. In closing, I just want to, uh, first of all, thank you for the time that you spent with us today and, and the, the valuable information that you have given because the, one of the reasons why we do this Thought Leader uh, Thursday Leadership Webinar Series is we have made a decision as a company that uh, what we've done speaks for itself. And when I say something, people think that I'm trying to sell a message. And yeah. I'm so thankful that you're here to help me tell the audience that that it's not Ken saying this. We've actually did it together. It's it's yeah. working and, and it, it, it really happens. So yeah. so and final question to you if if you were to if you were to um look at your young self, think about Dan Bilger who's getting into the marketing and, and product development business. What would you want to know then that you've learned today? that could help you in your business and grow in your career? Sure. Um, I, I think- um, And I realize I caught you off guard on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 that's a lot to, lot to, to sift through there. Uh, but I, 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 think, I think that it's, it's about perspective. You know, I mean, I, and unfortunately, I, sometimes I think the only way you can gain perspective is by, is, is the experiences that you, that you have over time. But, mm -hmm. um, but having perspective, when, when I, what I mean by that is, when you when you when you're evaluating a product or a category or an opportunity or a brand, uh, being able to look at um, the end game or where you think that ultimately you could get to, not what a net, not and and resist the urge to be narrowly defined by some other external uh, metric that may or may not match up with what you have at your disposal. That might be a little bit abstract but but I, I guess I guess what I'm what I mean is um, you know really get on you know don't be afraid to recognize what's in front of you mm -hmm. and evaluate it on the basis of what's in front of you as opposed to trying to mold it to, to kind of um, to fit a preconceived notion of what you'd like to have in front of you and then if what it, if what you have in front of you is not what you'd like to have in front of you what can you do to make it that way <laughs> that's great no that's <laughs> That's awesome because I think I, oh man, that's that's so well put, Dan. Because I think that people look at, they go, well, it has to do this. Right. Well, maybe maybe there are there there are external circumstances that aren't going to let it do this. But if you're if you have perspective and you understand, if I just did this a little bit, I can still get to the same place. I just might get there a little differently and and have the humility and the open mindedness to do it. Yeah, and, and 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 not be afraid to tell yourself no, that's not going to work, <laughs> you know, and maybe kind of take a step back and 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 take a different approach. Yeah, um, I think that that is probably you know uh, along the lines of, you know, just having honesty, ha having a you know an internal voice that that you're honest with yourself uh, as you as you evaluate opportunities. Yeah, sometimes yeah. Yeah. sometimes a dud's a dud. 
That's right. Or, or you know, as, as much as as much as the organization or you might want it to be something, if it's not, it's not. It's not right. Yeah. And at the same time, yeah. there's a there's a glimmer that you see that others won't, mm -hmm. and it's your opportunity to to pull that out and to to help yeah. people see what what everyone else what what exactly. you what you see. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you know that you know when when you when you finally hit it. Um, and you say this is, you know, people are really going to be, you know, really going to benefit from this mm -hmm. innovation or this new idea or whatever it is, um, you know, then, you know, then it's all about getting the word out and, and telling the story. This, and I, I'm sorry I lied to you. This is my last question because it just made, okay. me think of, make me think of something. So you understand in your business, one of the major um, opportunities for business is the International Houseware Show. Yep. And that was taken away in 2020. Right. Um, it's now pushed into the summer of 2021. Great. So if you are a brand, if you're a company in the housewares business, mm -hmm. what, are the th what are the things that you would recommend um, companies that are in the same space to be thinking about differently for 2021? Because sales goals don't change. Right. Everything doesn't change. It's just how we go about it is obviously changing and changing on a consistent right. basis. But what would your recommendation be there for people in your position? Yeah, I, I mean, 20, look, 2020 was a, a crazy year for all of us for so many different reasons. And the fact that the houseware show was was canceled. I mean, it's not a surprise. It was the right decision. This yeah. was all the way back in March. So at the time, I mean, actually, that was one of the very first things that got canceled. This was before anybody even knew how serious or how far reaching uh, the pandemic would be ultimately become. Mm -hmm. But um, we we had to adapt. You know, we had to adapt. We 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 weren't going to, you know, pack up our 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 toys and go home. I mean, we had a product to launch, and we were planning on that March Houseware show um, to really get our message out and and to really meet with a lot of key stakeholders. We had to do it re virtually. We had to do it remotely. You know, we couldn't even travel and go to see them in person, um, you know, because as the months wore on, it it, it became you know, clear that that just wasn't going to happen. Um, and so, you know, we were successful in in um, in, in in making those relationships, um, but we had to adapt. And I think that having the content of what you and I worked on together mm -hmm. um, as part of the package in communicating ultimately what we had to offer helped set us apart in a, what arguably was a pretty difficult situation and that you couldn't sit across the table from anybody. You know, I think that as we look forward into 2021, I mean, um, it, it's, uh, you know, and the show being in August, I mean, that's somewhat problematic because by the time August rolls around, all the decisions for the fall and, and, and the following spring have, have already been made uh, in many cases, or definitely the fall. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we'll go, we'll go, you know, we'll go to the show, you right. know, we'll, 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 um, we'll do all the things that we wish we could have done this year, mm -hmm. but, but, um, you know, we, we, you guys have to figure out different ways of doing it. Yeah. You, know, you have to, you know, utilize, uh, uh, you know, virtual communication and, and, uh, we got really good at, at demonstrating product in the office using cell phone cameras and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, us working together on content that you can send yeah. specifically to a retailer or a buyer yeah. or whatever. Yeah, was, that, that definitely made an impact and, and you know having having that that's what i was referring to that content yeah yeah that you can share um you know just to make it real um yeah. you, you know because you can say oh yeah i'm going to run advertising like yeah i've heard that before <laughs> yeah. um but but um but to be able to say no i really am and and here's what it looks like right um made a made a huge difference and i think i think that what i take away from that is um yeah. you're making you've been making your case all year long through direct to consumer marketing and advertising, you've been making yes. your case. So by the time they see you, they're like, Oh, I know who you guys are because you've been making your case. So right. maybe that is the, the, the recommendation to other businesses. Yeah. Make a case. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, in this case, we've had to just start running because you know the gun never went off, right? <laughs> right? We just yeah. we just had to start running, and, and we went out and we did it. Um, and I think that now, as we as we roll into the following year, 
um, you know, we're having all the same conversations, but now we have some some mileage under our to be able to say, you know, we we did this, right? And and, and moving forward, whether or not you know we could get you on board in year one, you certainly can get you on board in year two. And right. so, um, you know, even in that difficult environment where, um, you know, I, I, it would have been ideal to, to get more retailers on board from day one, clearly we still have the opportunity to, um, to, to build on that momentum because there's not a, it's not a short term strategy. It's a long term strategy. Yeah. But what a leg up you yeah. built up for yourself. 100%. Yeah. hundred percent. Awesome, Dan. Thank you so much. Um, I know our audience is going to get a tremendous amount of value. If people, if people um, want to know a little bit more about Kenmore and Cleva and and specific things that you might be able, how would people get a hold of you? How, 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 what are your contact that you're comfortable with? Um, you know, I think um, I'm fairly active on on LinkedIn, okay. uh, and I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, it's to reach out to me via LinkedIn and yep. have a fairly extensive network. I don't even know how many connections. It's 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 a lot, um, and so yeah, that that that's something that's probably the best. And and then that makes it so easy to connect and and yeah. uh, take take conversations offline <laughs> as need be. Again, thank you very much for Tell, being our guest yeah, on thank you. Um, Thought Leader Thursdays here at the screen. I appreciate it. Sure. All right, so thank you very much for joining us on the webinar. Um, you know, there were some really interesting questions and it, it, what was really that I found interesting was a lot of people um, on the webinar that had um, specific um, goals and, and specific companies they worked for with brands. And I thought that was, I really appreciate that because, you know, Dan is such a great um, person to, to talk through those things specifically because he went through it and we do it all the time but you know us talking about it is one thing but actually somebody who's gone through it with us has so much better um, perception of the answer to that question so i'm hope i hope dan was able to to do that and answer it for you well and and um, there was a couple of questions that specifically that uh, i just want to make sure i get back to some of you who asked some questions there were at least three questions that i want to get i want to talk to a team member i mean i can talk specifically about strategy i can talk specifically about creative and i can talk specifically about omni-channel um but most importantly when it comes to the financials um i can talk enough but i want to get the real good thorough answers for you so we will we have your email and we'll get back to you specifically on that so you know before we end here before I open and maybe open the forum to um, live questions is our next webinar coming up is on May 20th. And I spoke with the vice president of global D2C marketing for TaylorMade, John Gonzalez. And TaylorMade is a global golf brand. And we had a great conversation about taking a, a, another product under their portfolio called the uh, Adams Tight Lies um, and reintroducing that to the golf world. And the campaign started started and continues to do really, really well. I'm really proud of it. One of the, one of the most reasons I'm proud of it is that many, many years ago, we were involved in the initial launch of the Adams Tight Lies. And that company at that point was literally in the trunk of a 1976 Cadillac Eldorado. And then three years later, we were very much part of helping them grow to over a hundred million dollars and then sold to a private equity firm. And then obviously got gobbled up through the, the Adidas brand, the TaylorMade brand. But anyways, but it came back with new design. It's such a great club and it came back with some new design from TaylorMade's engineers. And we relaunched it um, just uh, at, the beginning, at the end of last year and into this year is doing really, really well. So he, it's a great conversation about how they're using direct to consumer for all of their touch points, specifically for that product and how it is performing really, really well. And it's a complete omni-channel um, campaign. And again, there's just a great value from somebody who didn't know much about direct-to-consumer when it came to television and digital 
in at least in, in our ecosystem, but how he has um, embraced it and how he's using it for the brand on a global basis. So stay tuned for that webinar. It's great. And John's a, a, a really interesting and knowledgeable guy. And we had a, a great conversation that's great value for that. So anyways, um, that's really it. And I'm looking for some questions and I don't see any questions live, but like I said, we will get back to you specifically to answer some of those questions. And most importantly, I wanna thank you very much for joining our Thought Leader Thursday webinar series. We um, are here to answer a lot of questions, give a lot of value because when you're thinking about direct to consumer and television, digital, social, OTT, whatever, whatever it is, there's a very specific way that you have to go about it from the very get-go. Not only is it from a financial standpoint, it is from specifically how you structure your message and how you structure your message on different platforms. Because direct-to-consumer works on every platform, but you have to make um, contextual content at scale in addition to the television. So it's not about just creating a, maybe a 30 second or a 60 second ad and just putting it on Facebook or putting it on Instagram or doing it in LinkedIn or other places. It's about making that, that, that information contextual to the platform. Instagram's gonna look and feel differently. YouTube's gonna look and feel differently. LinkedIn's gonna look and feel differently. Facebook is gonna look and feel differently from the television, but them all working together is what really um, fuels a successful direct-to-consumer campaign because it's the journey we take. We all have this journey where we may watch television, but then we're on our phone for, you know, and there's research that says we look at our phone over 150 times a day, right? 80% of people will look at their phone within 15 minutes of waking up out of bed. So that's how powerful it is. You just want to make sure you're getting your main points and on every specific touch point your consumer's going to have. And then that is what drives it. And then from uh, a key performance indicator or financially, you can aggregate that information and understand, as Dan said, exactly how you're doing on a weekly basis. To, and that tells you how much more money you want to invest, how much more inventory to bring in, or even do you want to pull back a little bit because you, you're trying to get um, better media efficiency ratios. So there's so many different dynamic ways to look at it. But, you know, most importantly is getting your message out there solving a consumer's problem in a unique way, driving the brand for trust and authority, other people validating it and put together a great offer that is that is um, equal or mirrored in every single touch point that your consumer is gonna have. So that's it for our webinar today. Thank you very much for joining us. And again, join us on May 20th and you'll learn more about another iconic brand, TaylorMade, and how they introduced a new club direct-to-consumer globally. Thanks again.